May we now ask the next city which has answered, so to say, our invitation uh, to be part of that network, the city of Cape Town. And Councillor Johannes van der Merwe, who's councillor in other cities, where we would say deputy mayor in the city of Cape Town and responsible for energy, environmental and spatial planning. So please tell us, what are the main sustainable procurement activities and commitments you have and what you expect from the network? Um, good afternoon and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, before I start, I must tell uh, the mayor of Auckland that uh, coming from Cape Town in South Africa, I must admit today that your rugby team is the best in the world. So, um, the city of Cape Town has identified five key areas of intervention within its procurement practice. At each stage asking how this implementation might develop our public procurement structures. The first one is demand management. Asking ourselves if we need to procure and how do we reduce wastage? The second one, acquisition management. Can we buy products that have minimized resource use and have we undertaken a full life cycle costing of the products that we intend to purchase? The third one, logistics planning. Can we use local suppliers and reduce the number of deliveries? Can we use transversal contracts? The fourth one, disposal management. Can this be reused, recycled, or disposed of safely? And the last one, supply chain performance. Have we calculated and communicated our savings and reduced environmental cost so as to encourage others to promote green procurement within their own operations? Now, several practical initiatives are underway within the city of Cape Town. Within the transport sector, the city standard for vehicle fleet includes the measurement of fuel efficiency and Euro standard functionality. The tender for the My City buses, which form the stock of the municipality run public transport, incorporate a Euro 5 vehicle certificate specification. In 2009, the city's electricity services department won the Green Supply Chain Award for its fleet management tender specifications. Two taxi ranks within the city of Cape Town have been transformed into sustainable public transport facilities with solar panels installed upon the roofs and water conscious washing amenities constructed for minibus taxis. We have sought to ensure that electricity efficiency plays a major role in Cape Town's procurement practice within the initial progress being made through retrofits of council operations. I will only mention two of these initiatives. All traffic lights in Cape Town have been retrofitted with LED bulbs. A $2 million investment is paid back over three years with savings of just under a million dollars per annum, 7,000 tons of carbon and 7,500 megawatt hours of electricity per year. In, finally, 26% of our large city-owned buildings have been retrofitted to improve the energy efficiency. This $3.2 million investment will result in savings of 1,300 megawatts, 1,200 tons of carbon, um, $170,000 every year. Performance guarantee contracts have been included in the service agreements of the city supplier to underwrite these energy and financial savings. The city of Cape Town has also made gains by instituting fundamental recycling practices. Since 2009, over 250 city buildings have been serviced by a recycling tender, which ensures collection of 10 to 15 tons of paper and cardboard every month. Cape Town is in the process of accrediting its waste management service providers 
so as to ensure that waste management activities are traceable and that environmentally friendly disposal is promotable. Regulations within supply chain practices are unnecessarily restrictive as value is often misunderstood to mean the lowest prices. So despite the change in mindset that needs to be achieved across the poles of the municipal authority, the city of Cape Town has ambitious targets for the fields of its public procurement. Within the next three years, the city will have developed a sustainable public procurement strategy which will entice the supply chain procedures all departments into its nexus. Our aim for this strategy is to be written into the city's IDP. Similarly, the Green Procurement Guidance will be rewritten to create user-friendly engagement guides for all departments as the change management process takes effect. The city will undertake a sustainable public procurement research project assessing the greening of its top three product areas in order to add for our institutional understanding of cost and evidence. Specific tenders and capital projects will be greened from conception to actualization, hopefully resulting in an entire review of the current supply chain policy. Finally, we hope to introduce green building guidelines for city buildings which are influential in the design and materials procurement for all new city buildings. I thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor van der Merwe from the City of Cape Town.